This is 7 National News and in our top story, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, received the Prime Minister of the Republic of Serbia and the President of Chechnya. Both parties are in the country to attend the 2016 Formula One Etihad Airways Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at the Yas Marina Circuit. And the Crown Prince welcomed the two guests and discussed with them the friendship and cooperation between their two countries and the UAE, as well as ways to strengthen them. The Crown Prince also met with Formula One Group CEO Bernie Eccleston at the Yas Marina Circuit, and they spoke about the preparations for the final round, as well as important events associated with the sporting event in Abu Dhabi. The Crown Prince wished all the drivers and organisers of the Formula One Abu Dhabi Grand Prix success. Climate change and how to save the environment will be added across the UA school curriculum in the near future, as announced by Tani Ahmad al Zayudi, the Minister of Climate Change and Environment. The move comes as the minister signed an agreement with the Ministry of Education and the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi. And under the terms, the three government bodies will work together to introduce the sustainability programs and green curriculum in every school. This will include education on sustainability and energy saving and will cover school children of all ages, including in private sector schools, learning the importance of turning off lights and air conditioning when not in use and also how to use less water. Al Zudi stated that the sustainable curriculum will be applied across a number of subjects, such as economic and science. And a group of government and private schools across the country will be a part of a pilot scheme that will start next year. School children will also be taught about how the UA's efforts are moving forward to combat climate change, such as the Paris Agreement, which it signed in April along with 192 other states. The Community Development Authority is calling on Emiratis and expats to become companions to the elderly, as well as volunteer for National Day, New Year's functions or blood donation drives. Hannah al Harthi, the director of the CDA's Social Cohesion Department, made the announcement and was quoted in a local daily saying that the Community Development Authority wants to tap into community spirit and is keen for Arabic and non-Arabic speakers to take part in social initiatives. She added that they are setting at the foundation and bridging the gap between communities. It was also noted that among the programmes that need volunteers is Walif, which is Arabic for companion, which encourages residents to check in on elderly neighbours who may live alone or with domestic help. Volunteers can escort them on shopping trips or take them to government centres, as well as appointments with doctors. The MENA region has unique challenges when it comes to heart failure that require unique responses. That's according to the latest report. A study showed that re-hospitalisation rates are much higher in the MENA region than in other countries. These may be driven in part by inadequate awareness and understanding of heart failure at all levels of the health system, as well as in consistent patient follow-up. High readministration rates are also costly and often avoidable, according to experts who gathered at the MENA Heart Failure Alliance, which is the region's first dedicated group for heart failure management, where they discussed the findings from the MENA Heart Failure Roadmap Report. Representatives from the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi stated that the MENA region has one of the youngest populations of heart failure patients around the world with the population at developing heart failure 10 years younger than their Western counterparts. They added that despite a striking improvement in their prognosis and survival in patients with coronary artery disease, hypertension and congenital heart disease, the prevalence of heart failure still continues to grow. Awareness of heart failure is low, which can affect all aspects of heart failure care. And one of the key focus areas for the Alliance is to work with a cross-section of specialists to create awareness to ensure that patients and professionals can make informed decisions. The biggest difference in risk factors between the MENA region and the Western world is probably the prevalence of hypertension and diabetes as well as obesity. If we look at these risk factors, 
their percentages are significantly higher than in developed countries. And we believe that it is because of that that patients are diagnosed with heart failure at a younger age compared to their counterparts in the West. In specific terms, diabetes is very, very endemic in the um, um, Middle East, especially in the Gulf region. And um, we're talking about type 1 diabetes. This is the type of diabetes that affects children. Because it starts at such a young age, it means that people are going to live with it a lot longer than people diagnosed with the other type of diabetes at adulthood. With this being the case, again, the likelihood of developing heart disease is also going to probably be higher at a younger age, uh, probably because of that. The Dubai Road and Transport Authority opened the last phase of the Al Huda interchange on Saturday, which is situated between the Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road and Al Yalayis Road. The project is under the directors of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, to speed up the delivery of road infrastructure projects around the site of the Expo 2020. The opening of the interchange follows the construction of four east-west bridges extending along Al Yalias Road, made up of three lanes in each direction, and the last phase is said to have cost around 228 million dirhams. The total cost of improving and widening the Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road from the outskirts of Dubai near Sharjah up to the Al Huda interchange amounts to 1.91 billion dirhams. The interchange will ensure a smooth flow of traffic from Al Yalayis Road heading east to Dubai Investment Park and west to the Sheikh Zayed Road and Jebel Ali Free Zone Authority, as well as traffic headed north and southbound on Mohammed bin Zayed Road to and from Abu Dhabi. The High Committee of National Day Celebrations over in Sharjah has approved the official programme of 24 activities that will mark the 45th UA National Day Celebrations with a mix of entertainment for Emiratis and residents across the city. Some of the activities include a national operetta taking place at Flag Island and 20 activities that will be hosted at the Sharjah National Park, including accomplishments of a country, rise of a nation. Held in a specially designed tent, the initiative showcases the UA's achievements throughout history through art and innovation. There's also We Build With Our Hands at the Park, which features a group of young Emirati entrepreneurs and SME owners who will share their experiences and success stories, as well as Oasis of Creativity, which will feature educational games and artistic workshops, and also a reading pavilion to coincide, of course, with the year of reading 2016. Three more events will be held at the Sharjah Mega Mall, including music and folklore, a people's parade, and Shabiat Al Khartoum for children. Tarek Al Nakbi, the director of the Sharjah Media Centre and deputy chairman of the Higher Committee of National Day Celebrations in Sharjah, made the announcement, adding that they have completed all the necessary preparations to celebrate the 45th National Day, with the programme running from November the 29th to the 3rd of December. And finally, looking to other news now, Celebrity Constellation, which is a luxury vessel from one of the world's biggest cruise operators, launched its maiden voyage from Abu Dhabi Cruise Terminal today as a part of a three-month-long home port deployment at Zayed Port in Abu Dhabi. The itinerary for Celebrity Constellation, which is a 295-metre, 91,000-tonne vessel, will include calls at Dubai, Muscat and Oman, and along the west coast of India, which according to Abu Dhabi Tourism and Culture Authority, is quite appealing to visitors from the USA, the UK and Germany, as well as guests from Europe, China and the Far East. Officials highlighted that their aim is to establish Abu Dhabi as a viable home port base for the world's leading cruise lines and the departure of Celebrity Constellation, which is the first ship to make the UA capital its home, will further encourage other premium luxury ship operators around the world to choose Abu Dhabi as their regional Arabian Gulf cruises. 
with a capacity to host 2,170 guests in 975 state rooms on 13 decks. Celebrity Constellation is one of the three Abu Dhabi originating cruise departures for this season and will sail up to 15 nights of cruises covering five ports of call until the end of January next year. Apart from a host of world-class attractions offered to its passengers, the vessel's various offerings include a kids' play area for visitors with families, a luxury dining experience, the Emporium offering passengers the opportunity to buy rare artworks, as well as an indoor celebrity theatre. While Abu Dhabi Cruise Terminal was only opened at Zayed Port last season, it was revealed that a total of 137 cruise liners are expected this season. That's a 21% increase. And Abu Dhabi is all set to welcome 26 ships with two further Abu Dhabi originating cruises this season. The number of passengers, uh, more than 2,000 uh, passengers. Also, we actually uh, have the highest... Uh, a number of uh, calls this year uh, we have 137 calls uh, from different cruise liner uh, 27 uh, cruise liners uh, sorry uh, 20, uh, 26 uh, uh, cruise ship and uh, we also uh, uh, have a no uh, number of visitor, uh, visitors increased by 9% uh, from 231 uh, to uh, 265 uh, we're also introducing Sir Banias Island as the first stop, uh, stop beach, uh, beach over. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We've Absolutely. been on the ship for about four weeks since it left Rome. And, well, the food has been excellent. Uh, uh, the, the service the, the super. The service, wonderful. The cabins um, are very nice. And we've, we found it a very, very friendly ship. 